So I'm going to come back to my BRCA expert. Okay? <laughs> so BRCA you said that in, in Solo 1 it was 0.3, but in the high-risk population it was maybe 0.44, maybe you know, in that range. So 0.3, 0.4 kind of felt the same. And again, I'm just trying to get some perspective, just, you know, the, and you said that the BRCA here was 0.44. So I guess that's also, I mean, is a PARP a PARP in BRCA patients? Uh, I think a PARP is a PARP in BRCA patients. I actually do think that, um, I think it's hard to compare hazard ratios across trials with different yeah. control arms. Yeah. So uh, here it's 22 months from diagnosis. That's right. Um, in solo one, it would be about the same, 20 months, because uh -huh. we had seven. Mm -hmm. So this may be a m more similar population to yeah. solo one, more but, representative. But also remember, this includes patients who could have progressed during frontline or actually had stable disease. And we had a pretty decent proportion right. of patients that had stable disease. Because if they progressed or had stable disease, they weren't eligible. They weren't eligible for solo right. one. That's yeah. the point, yeah. So, I mean, I, I think it's, it's within, it's still excellent. I think it's within range. I don't know that you can say it's equivalent or better, but I don't think it's, I think it's all within range. Okay. And when you look at the confidence intervals, I mean, they all sit. Yeah, right on top right? of each other. They sit right on top of each other. So let's go ahead and now talk to our HRD expert. I just appointed you a professor of HRD. So in the primary endpoint of Prima, which was BRCA HRD, okay, it was point, it was, I don't even remember because I can't, I, I take the HRDs at 0.43. But if you take the BRCA out of it, it's 0.5. I want to emphasize, though, that that was a, an exploratory endpoint. So I, I like the taking the BRCA out of the HRD, but it's an exploratory endpoint. So when you take the 0.5 in Prima and compare it to, again, taking the BRCA out of it, it's 0.74 in VLIAP. Rob, tell me why that's an inappropriate comparison to take exploratory endpoints in two different trials and come up with a definitive conclusion. But go to what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> so here's, here's the deal. So, so I'm, I, first of all, I'm not sure why we have to, why we have to do this Because this is what's going to happen in the clinic. No, no, is no, that there no, are going to no. be patients Wait who are wait, HRD non-BRCA, and these guys are going to, and likely both drugs are going to get approved, and they're going to have to make a decision, and it's going to come back to familiarity and toxicity. So wait a minute, but none of the, none of the if, if VILI is approved, it's not going to be approved on an HRD it's not going to require HRD knowledge. No question, but I'm going to have HRD if in my pocket. If Prima gets approved, it's not going to I'm be... I'm going to have HRD in my pocket. And but I have... Because I, I want so, to know. So, okay. And I'm going to use that information why, to make but, a rational decision. Based on what? Based on what, the... What, what, what I'm just saying. Let what, me tell what, you. Wait, 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 wait. Let me ask you a question. Which strategy, PARP inhibitor, BEV, no treatment, is going to be based on an HRD assay? In, these guys told me that if you have an HRD molecular signature, they're going to prefer a PARP inhibitor. So I got two decisions, PARP or BEV, mm -hmm. PARP if it's HRD, okay. now I have to decide which PARP, and that's what I'm trying to address. Which PARP inhibitor? So the HRD is going to... Voliprib or, 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 so, or, or Durapra? So, HR, so the result of the HRD assay is going to inform your choice It's going to contribute inhibitor. to it. Because I want to take all the information. What do you think? Go ahead. HRD well, expert. you know, I, I don't, I mean, I, you're, you're coming there, at it from two, you're coming two different at, cut points two, for the assay. Yeah, you're, you're coming at it from two different angles. We, we, one is sort of the scientific approach, which is what Rob is objecting to. The other one is what's practical in the clinic. And what I think what Brad's saying is absolutely true. And it's just like people saying, I'm going to give BIV to this patient because there was an ad hoc analysis of ICON-7 saying that ascites and big tumors patients benefited. I mean, that was all ad hoc. But... It, it worked its way into the U.S. population. The truth is, scientifically, Rob just mentioned it, there's another big issue here. The two assays are not equivalent. They used the cutoff of 33 here, which means, what does Billion. it mean? It means that there are wild type patients or non-HRD stuck in there, right. which raises the hazard ratio. So it's a, little, it's a little difficult to interpret. Shannon, what do you think? I mean, it was just a I, I get it that you're contaminated by the Coleman no, effect at MD Anderson. I, but I'm also rationally treating my patients. I'm just trying patients. to be smart. <laughs> I'm just trying. But you're at MD Anderson. That's not rational. That's true. Um, no, I mean, I'm going to use this. I mean, because we really do need some. You mean some, the HRD Yeah, acid. you got you to gotta use something. And eventually, we're going to have a really great study that's all for HRD negative patients. And then we'll be able to even more use it. But for now, we need to give them an idea of what this their general likelihood of getting benefit is and help them make a decision about whether they want to get PARP with chemo, PARP after chemo, BEV, 
Bev Parp. I mean, there's yeah, but so, so many. Yeah, you're but you're basing that on what? Exploratory, Exploratory analysis. Exploratory analysis. And but some people, but let's, were, I mean. Were they balanced? No. Were they controlled? No. Was there, were they actually no. analyzed we're with doing P? Was, a, was it a P value in there? No. Okay, okay. okay. I just want to make sure. And that's, right, and that's right, really, right. so Katie, go ahead. You can reference. Sorry. I just asked you the question. I mean, I agree with Mike. I think that both are, both of you are right. But this is exactly what we did in the platinum sensitive recurrent setting. Like it's the exact same thing where you have an all comers approval for all the three PARPs and people, you can either say, I believe the data and I'm going to use a PARP first because I don't know if she's going to be able to get a PARP again. You know, and now it's changed now with frontline. So it's a pragmatic sort of selection or you get the HRD and you decide if you're going to use Bev or PARP based on that, all of which is based on exploratory analysis. And you know, people in the clinic are doing both. I think of probably doing more of the latter than just using it per label. So I think that's, I agree with Shannon. I think that folks are going to use this to make decisions clinically and counsel patients, even though statistically it is inappropriate. And it's not, it's not the only determinant.